and a lot of other landlords, they actually mm. laughed at me. He goes, hey, yo, three cents, Casey, three cents. I'm like, yo, like you should know that. As a landlord, you should follow the proper procedures, right? Mm. I can't say it's 50 cents or one dollar. I, I, unfortunately, I have to send this out, but now we're gonna follow up with phone calls. I had actually about 12 barbecue like grills. Have you guys ever seen 12 barbecue ta tables like chained up to fence? I politely told them to remove it. They swore at me and give me the bad names and give me the C word. Go back home, China man. Casey Wong exposed. Well, sort of. Actually, really not really at all. But I noticed recently, all of a sudden, I started getting some really heated comments about Casey Wong on some of our videos. And that actually led to a newspaper article that came out that really displayed just one side of an argument. And that argument was landlord versus tenant. Number one, the moment we start framing these things as arguments and one versus the other, we're already setting ourselves up for failure. So in today's video, Casey's going to share his perspective in a very, you know, calm demeanor and just a logical thought process. So one, I really appreciate Casey for taking the time and the energy to make this video. Most landlords, they would just want a turtle once they have a newspaper or the general media going after them. So first of all, hats off to Casey because this really is a class act being willing to have this conversation in a calm and just concise manner. So one, thank you. Casey so much. Number two, you guys, this is really important for us as landlords to understand that especially in this day of social media and the narrative that just me the media and like society in general is painting about landlords, we're being positioned as evil, greedy, you know, like we're like the worst thing ever according to some people. So that's why I think it's really important that we have these open dialogues where we try and keep our emotions in check. And one, I just want to thank Casey for doing so, but let's dive into today's video where Casey's going to share his perspective on the recent kind of scandal or whatever you want to call it that occurred over three cents. What is up YouTube, Matt McKeever here in St. Catharines and we're here with Casey Wong and we've got a special video today. We're really gonna be kind of just exposing both sides of the conversation as far as landlord and tenants. There's been a lot of stuff going on in the news lately and so Casey was uh, kind enough to agree to make a video and just kind of discuss his perspective and really share the full story behind what's going on here in St. Catharines. So let's dive into it. Excellent. How's it going Casey? Good, how you doing? Good. So we bought this building in August uh, 2019. This is about the same time where OREC was happening 2019. Yeah. We put an offer in at that you weekend. You talked about it on stage. Exactly. Yeah. I talked about this on stage. Perfect. What are the key financial metrics you focus on when starting the analysis of a potential property? So when you first, when a property gets on your radar, what are, are there some rules of thumb or how do you go about determining whether it's worth digging deeper into? What I first look at is where it's located, obviously. Um, so there's certain markets that we have researched that we don't go into. So would you guys mind sharing with the audience maybe a deal you recently looked at, whether it's something you purchased or decide not to purchase, and just tell us why you decide to either buy that deal or not buy it? We're actually analyzing when we're, when we're driving here, so um, very current. So I already put in an offer. He knows what we're looking for. Um, and I trust when he says, good deal, lock it down. Don't give specifics, look at all these comments. <laughs> <laughs> um, basically closed on, uh, in August. So we're August, uh, right? Like yep. September, October, November, December, January, February. So we're about six months in right now. So a lot of the stuff that we, when we get this building, there's some deferred maintenance. And it doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad, okay? We just have to make sure that we have cash to be able to deploy to fix these issues. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, so we get this engineer. I always say PN, just a professional yeah. engineer. So this professional engineer, let's watch this car here. I want to kill. Okay. So a professional engineer will give you this report, and this report essentially will um, will tell you exactly uh, what OBC, which is Ontario Building Codes requirements are. Okay, and I have to make sure that it's done and done properly, and so on and so forth. So a top line basically is always going to be uh, safety and uh, safety of residents and safety of the building and the, yeah. the condition of the building. So let's take a look at the building right now. What we did was um, the balcony rails. Some of the balcony rails 
was literally about two to about five centimeters off on the top rail. So it doesn't meet code. Uh, it's short by two millimeters. This is two millimeters, okay? I don't know how many threads of hair that is or five millimeters, okay? So it doesn't comply. It's a pass or fail. And I see that as it's a fail, okay? If you're less than a certain amount, whatever that requirements are, if it's two millimeters off, it's off, okay? So we can talk about um, pass or fail in different regards, but a two millimeters may not seem much because it's a balcony. A two millimeter on a span of one kilometer because it's a bridge is material, okay? So what I see is that, hey, you may say it's immaterial. Engineers say two millimeters is off, it's two millimeters is off, it doesn't pass. So I have to make sure that it's, it's safe. So I put a top rail um, on top of the balcony and then I had to weld that on, get my welder to come in and weld it on and repaint everything. Got the, um, the fascia done on the top balcony, put that up, okay? We still haven't changed the sign, it, sign is, you know, it's, it's important, but these things are crucial. So there's only so much we can tackle all at once. And this is uh, like, quote unquote, life safety, right? So balcony, make sure that that's done. Some of the uh, tuck pointing around the building has to get done. Um, we painted the balconies, okay? And I did mention about the balcony on top. So this coating on top, I always put elastic meric paint. It's a rubberized paint, so we put that in the summertime. It expands and it contracts. Um, so we put it on the top surface. You don't paint the, the bottom surface because you want, you want it to breathe. It's concrete, it's porous, it's gonna absorb water. So you make sure that the top, uh, the coat is good and that's uh, w like sort of weather water waterproof. Okay, so that's done. Recocked all the windows and all the, all the doors. So that too was on the list from the engineer. Um, make sure all the downspouts are away from the building. If it's not, put some gravel, make sure it's leveled and le basically uh, flowing away from the building. Let's keep on walking. Some of these signs, some of these, uh, some of these tenants had issues with parking. Um, we, as landlords, as, as property managers, have to know that anything on the ground, it doesn't follow code, okay? You can't say that, okay, well, I have a handicap sign, a handicap spot, it's right here on the floor. Here in Ontario, on a light dusting of snow, it becomes non-handicapped right away. Right? So we have to know, as a property manager, you have to take a look at your bylaws. It has to be basically on a post, on a sign that's visible, I think it's about five feet or five and a half feet. And it has to be in front of that parking spot. So nothing on the ground. It's easy for people just to paint it on and say that, okay, well I have a handicap spot. No, it doesn't comply with bylaw. So you have to understand what, what works and what doesn't. What complies with bylaw and what doesn't. Okay, so these are the stuff that, you know, in my head I have a whole bunch of useless information, but you have to take a look at the parking, uh, and parking signs and things like that. So that's gonna be done. Um, there's some potholes we're gonna get done as well. I already contacted the, uh, the asphalt company. Um, a lot of the, the trees, um, we push them all back. So we take a look at, let's take a look over here. So some of these trees, we're, we actually uh, cut all these limbs to push it away from the building. I know we talked about here at the back, I went up the, uh, the ladder onto the, uh, onto the roof. Just give me a sec. There's some issues here in regards to electrical. I don't know why there's three junction, four, four junction boxes up here. It's a little weird, a little odd. It is a safety issue. I should be a roofer. <laughs> so come on over, I'm just gonna do a quick walk. So what I'm looking for right now is uh, no major structural issues. Uh, everything is good, balcony is good. I took a look at the, uh, the railings. And yeah, the roof is not great, but it's not something that you're not going to invest in just because it's a roof. Yes, it's a 8,000 square feet roof, $10, that's $80,000, okay? Is it going to, you know, uh, uh, puncture like thousands of holes? No, it's not. There was some um, issues with, the, uh, with some of the leaks. So what happens is usually near the breathers where the, uh, where the stacks are, uh, these are for the toilets. So you know what? Get your, roofer co uh, your roofing company. I use Santos from uh, Garcia Roofing. He came from Kitchener. He comes over here and gets it done. Very, very simple. He'll see the perforations using where the stacks are and then just re whatever. He cocks it and does it properly. And I'll hear an issue. Okay, so we have to. Yes, there's going to be issues. I'm not buying a brand new building. There's always going to be issues. Nothing is going to be perfect in your life. Nothing will be and nothing will be in the future. Ever, ever. Okay, but it's nothing that you can't overcome. You can't put that money in and make it right. So looking at this, these trees, we push it all back. I got Davy Trees to uh, 
to essentially making sure that I'm not killing these trees. But if you take a look, the tree line is now away from the building, okay? So if you see all that, you can see it just pushed away, not killing the trees. I can go straight up to my property line and cut just straight up vertically um, and push all those trees that's not on my, on my property away from uh, my property line and then get away from my building so it doesn't create any kind of damage. Likewise over here, same thing. Push it all away from the building so it's nice and, uh, nice and clean. So let's walk over here. Parking, we're going to be essentially on the tenants, not necessarily on the tenants, it's not on the lease. And they say that they had parking or whatever. You're gonna be taking a look at the lease and saying that if people have parking, they should be paying for it, okay? Because I have some derelict cars here that has flat tires and so on and so forth that you know people are not paying for or they just wanna store their, their, uh, their car, I say it's junk, but we're gonna have to get that towed. Let's talk about this back piece of land over here, because I know this is a this is a huge, um, huge asset. And it was like it's being underutilized, right? So this little piece of land came with this property. This little piece of land, what they were using this for was actually like a garden. So it was a community garden slash playground. Now you, as a property manager slash owner slash whatever, you are liable for everything. Okay, I had some tenants that didn't like each other. They're gardening together and they didn't like each other for whatever reason. I don't want to get in the history of whatever people had, have and had going forward and in the past, but you have to understand that you as a landlord, you're liable for this. So let's say a little old lady who's 95 years old who walks out, trips, breaks their hip, who's liable for it? Somebody who doesn't like one another, okay, you know, let's get a little bit of rat poison. Put on this little, uh, cherry tomato. Little boy runs up and goes, oh my goodness, it's a cherry tomato. I'm going to pick it up and eat it. Who's liable for that? Right? Somebody sits on one of those lawn chairs. There were lawn chairs there. They sit on it and they fall through. And again, somebody breaks their hips or breaks their legs or something like that, falls through a hole that somebody dug up because now you have loose soil and somebody dug up because they want to plant something and somebody falls and breaks their leg or breaks their ankle. You have to understand that you have to take a look at that liability first. So you as a landlord, as a property owner, you're, you, you have to take a look at everywhere. Once they close a door, okay, everything that's common area, you ha you're responsible for that. Okay, you as a landlord, you have to be aware of that. Okay, um, slip and falls. I had a slip and fall at 141 Linwood. We, the superintendent, we, we captured this person on, on video saying that, please don't go out. It was an ice, this is two years ago. It was, it was iced up. It was literally a centimeter thick of clear black ice, okay? We said, don't go out there. She still went out there. It's funny because we got her on tape, got her on video. She had a blanket with her for whatever reason. She was throwing out the garbage with a blanket. So she slipped and fell. She broke her wrist. She sued us, all right? My, my insurance company called me. Do you have everything on tape? Do you have the, uh, uh, the log sheets from the snow removal company? Do you have a log sheet for your superintendent that they was actually salting and uh, shoveling so on and so forth for the walkway? Yes, we do. They get that. The insurance company says, oh wow, that's unusual for landlord, for property manager to have. Well, I've been in this industry so on and so forth and it's like I've, I know my, my, my duties, right? So I'm telling you guys as property owners, you have to do the same. So you have to snow, you have to shovel the snow, you have to salt the walks, the walkways, things like that. You have to take a look at liability. If you think it's gonna be dangerous, then it probably would be, it will be. Okay, maybe it didn't happen before. Somebody didn't fall through a, a picnic table or, or a bench or things like that, but it could happen. Okay, one tenant could do something to another tenant, and who's responsible for it? You are as a landlord, as a property manager. Okay, so this we haven't stabilized it. This has been six months, but there's a lot of issues. Every there's let's go back to um, my, my Hyman building. We we're talking about um, uh, buildings when we take over. I had actually about 12 barbecue like grills. Have you guys ever seen 12 barbecue ta tables like chained up to fence on a property that, you know, the property manager wasn't um, there every day? It happens, okay? So what do you do? You, you politely tell them to remove it. I politely told them to remove it. They swore at me and give me the bad names and give me the C word. We'll tell, like Matt and I, we talked about that. So we got the little C word, the F, B, C. Matt will, uh, so it's effing bitchin' chink. That's what it was, okay? Go back home, China man. That's what it was. You know what? It's okay, you have to have a thick sin. I had to remove these grills, 
okay, these barbecue grills. That's 12 of them, right, chained up. Imagine having a 200 unit condominium or apartment building in downtown Toronto, you have 200 barbecue grills, crazy. Crazy what people will do if you're not watching, right? You as a property owner, you're responsible for your property and it could happen because I had a, a barbecue little pit bonfire at my Elgin building because students want to have, you know, on whatever, I think it was St. Patrick's Day or something like that and it's like, yo, yay, green beer and bonfires, or so, whatever. It's gonna happen, you, th you, you think it might happen, it will happen, trust me. So let's walk, um, great little piece of property here. We're going to sever this, this piece of land and build affordable housing and we talked about that as well so we we're, we're investing back into community i'm not here investing offshore somewhere i'm investing back into our community i'm actually canadian if you can believe that right some people say hey yo dude go back home i'm like scarborough right like uh yeah i don't look like i'm canadian because i'm not white i am chinese and i speak english i speak broken cantonese i went back to china to hong kong and they don't even accept me as being chinese because like i look chinese but i don't speak chinese i don't speak cantonese then people don't accept, accept me here not here but i'm saying you know everywhere because i look chinese but I, I don't like i don't even look canadian now right so i don't even know where i belong i just uh, i can make fun of myself before i was like i'm like a dog that doesn't bark right can you believe that like i look chinese but i don't speak chinese I look, I don't even look Canadian, but I sound like I'm Canadian on the phone. But here's a, here's a little tidbit, here's a little joke. It's like, whenever I um, email or text people, they say Casey, Casey Wong. Oh, it's a girl, Casey. Oh, Chinese, Wong, oh my goodness, hot Asian girl. I'm not a hot Asian girl, man. <laughs> so everybody has this, you know, it's like, they, they, they want to they wanna see where you come from or whatever. You know what? I'm really Canadian. I, I told Matt I want to become a cop, right, one time. Um, I went through the police force and so on and so forth, like through those, you know, those stages of testing, but I didn't pass the last, uh, the last interview for whatever reason. But it was only that one shot that I was going to do it. I got my eyes done, laser eyed and all that. Uh, now I'm getting older and I now need glasses. Um, but that's just me, okay? Um, but I really would like to invest back into the country, back here in Ontario, and this is where I grew up, right? In Ontario. So, let's talk a little bit more. Um, let's talk a little bit more about the bad news. Okay, there's always gonna be issues about, you know, the N4s, three cents, things like that. So let's go inside because it's cold, it's cold here. Uh, we're in Canada, we're in February right now, just after family day. Matt doesn't have a jacket. It's crazy. I threw mine out because I'm tired of winter. He's tired of winter, but crazy. So what we're doing here is that we're doing an intercom system for, for the building. This actually, when we took over this building, this didn't work, got quotes for it. Um, and then this is, this is gonna be installed. So it's a new type of intercom system where essentially somebody buzz, buzzes in here, they can open the door anywhere. So on your phone, they press number nine and bang, they can open this door. It just has to get uh, connected and we do that. Um, some of the some of the railings, this didn't comply, okay? So this is actually, this is all new. I installed this, I spent, I believe, uh, $4,000, $4,000 per railing times three. Three stories, okay? Um, sorry, yeah, three, three levels or three stories in this building. This is a two and a half story walk up. So I had to do it all, rip this all out because it didn't comply with OBC. So what this means is that if these pickets are a certain distance, okay, it's 100 millimeters. Uh, I think the code before was about uh, three and a half or four inches. So we're using the metric okay system so even if it's a 98 mils it doesn't comply so it's a pass or fail so we have to understand as property owners that if it doesn't comply it doesn't comply we have to do it right i can put a another um uh um basically another cross beam here and increase this and then i can put another one here to lessen the uh, uh the distance between the the pickets or the uh the spindles but what this means is that it just doesn't look good, right? It's almost the same cost. So it comes down to it's like $4,000. I'm gonna be putting, adding all these. It looks weird, right? It doesn't look good. Um, so I'd rather just rip it out. I spent the $4,000 per, so it's about $12,000. Some of these buildings, um, it's older. So these are built in 1960s and 70s. This is, we're on the second floor here. 
So if you take a look here, a lot of the, the lights, it was too dim. So the previous owner put um, Home Depot lights in here and yeah, it saves money. They call it candlestick. What this means is that illumination, a uh, certain amount of illumination. I, I don't remember the, uh, the, the specific value. It's like a 50 candlestick or something like that. It's illumination of the hallway. If it's too dim, it doesn't meet code, right? So we put in $7,000 worth of lights here and the hallways times three, right? So all these lights and all the exterior lights as well, okay, so that people can see. So we do put the money back into the, to the buildings and back into the community. Uh, so it's not just, hey, you're a slumlord, no. You have to run this building properly and you have to know where to put the money in. Some, sometimes it's, you, you know it's gonna be like a lost cause in a way that it's, it's a sunk cost in, in accounting terms. You basically put the money in, but you don't see it, right? Because it doesn't generate NOI. Yes, it doesn't, but you have to do it anyways because it's a code issue. It's a building code issue. And I'm, I'm very, I understand I'm a little bit too much to the T in a way that I'm a pass fail type of guy, like even three cents, like, I'll talk about that later, but you as a property owner, you have, to, you have to follow certain guidelines, certain rules set up by industry or set up by the municipality. So it could be bylaw for parking, could be illumination, candlestick, it could be codes for balcony rails, three millimeters, two millimeters, or five millimeters, anything like that. You have guidelines and you have um, uh, codes that you have to follow and you have to follow it. Bottom line, if you are a property owner, you follow these because these this is just the right thing to do, and these could potentially hurt somebody, okay? Somebody could slip and fall. Somebody can, can't see, and I need that illumination because I'm older, okay? So us, as property owners, I'm telling you guys one thing is that you guys do things properly and do things the right way, because a, a, a 10-year-old girl might say, hey, daddy, did you do something wrong? And I have to answer to that. I have to answer to my daughter and say, no, uh, Courtney, I didn't do anything wrong, right? But they wanna, they wanna show it in a light that I did do something wrong, but I did not do anything wrong under the guidelines of certain, uh, certain guidelines from the government, okay? So let's go and uh, talk a little bit more. So making sure that, you know, regular maintenance repairs are done properly. Everything has to, you, you have to get your people in here, right? I'm walking in this building, I go through the wrong way every time. Put this on the camera, because I don't remember things anymore. Um, you're walking through the building, and I don't know what's, what direction I'm going sometimes, right? It's okay, you make a mistake, you own up to it, and you move on. There's nothing wrong with making a mistake, doing something wrong, and correcting it. Right? and saying sorry. So I wanna talk about the three cents issue. Like when we took over this building, there's always gonna be issues. Um, different people have different takes on different notices and so on and so forth. Well, we've been doing the proper notices all the time. So in Kitchener, Waterloo, Cambridge, we send out these N4s, it's just a non-payment of rent. And then whatever the situation is that the following month, they say, hey, I'm gonna pay it uh, the extra $17 because we have a regular increase, right? Mm -hmm. So that's a normal, you know, we'll pay in and all that. Usually we don't have that, um, the uh, sort of the quote unquote like bad negative review or backlash or things like that. I understand that we should always, this is, this is good because now the public understands what we as a landlord, mm -hmm. tenants see it differently. Uh, it opens up dialogue, which you want. Right? I don't see this as bad publicity. I see this as, because we didn't do it, my, my, my daughter, my, my second year, uh, my number two of four, Courtney, she goes, because I numbered my kids now, <laughs> she goes, Daddy, did you do something wrong? Like, you're in the newspaper. And I go, no, Courtney, we didn't do anything wrong. Mm -hmm. We're actually using the proper, proper documents. This is an N4 yeah. non-payment of rent. So I told actually my, my administrator, her name is Ian, Ian. Uh, she's Somalian, great lady, hardworking lady, she'll, she'll send it out. These forms, I didn't tell her specifically if there's a dollar value. If it's in balance, there's a balance owing, we send it out. And those, she actually did follow my instructions to the T. Um, but that's what it is, is that there's no, there's no uh, sort of, you know, you know, two cents, five cents or whatever. No, I'm not gonna send it out one dollar. The thing is that there's, it seems immaterial to most, let's say one dollar, mm -hmm. but let's say cap rate has 80,000 units. Okay, yeah. 80,000, 
at one dollar, that's eighty thousand dollars per month that they're not collecting, right? That becomes very material. Eighty thousand dollars, right? Mm -hmm. I could retire from eighty thousand. So, when it comes down to it is that we as operators we follow the proper procedure, okay? So these are the regular forms, the N4s, the L1s, and those are the forms. Those are the days that we have to send it out. We send it out. Now, what what we changed here is that. We're gonna follow up with a phone call now, okay? Say, hey, you know, you are short three cents or five cents or whatever. Did you wanna put it on to the next rent, like next rent payment? So let's say it was a January 1st, they got that. It's very normal for January 1st because we always send it out and we always get late payments for January 1st, right? Then February 1st, it comes along and put it on that. So we're gonna call them first. And actually, Mandy Brennan quickly caught that, right? Because I was at this meetup and she goes, you know what, I'm gonna say that to my, my staff now, okay? So I wanna put her and say, hey, Mandy Brennan, she actually says that I'm gonna, I'm gonna use this as a learning experience. And a lot of other landlords, they actually laughed at me. He goes, hey, yo, three cents, Casey, three cents. I'm like, yo, like you should know that. As a landlord, you should follow the proper procedures, right? Yeah. I can't say it's 50 cents or $1. I, I, unfortunately, I have to send this out, but now we're gonna follow up with phone calls. We actually had, after this whole um, uh, sort of press, yeah. we actually had, uh, we call it a town hall meeting. It's a tenant and landlord meeting. The standard, uh, the uh, St. Catharines standard came, the, the reporter, his name is Alan uh, Benner, he came in and he said that this is actually amazing because no other landlord or property manager came in and explained their situation, wanting to get feedback from the tenants. Mm -hmm. So we actually got good feedback from them. They understand our situation. So it really is a win-win. So we, we have that dialogue with the tenants and we open up discussions. There was obviously one or two people that was, uh, you know, quite irate, um, saying that, you know, we're out to force people out. I have never forced anybody out. I told this to Matt before, and I said this to uh, the Well Off uh, uh, podcast with George. I said, I only paid off one person who was actually being evicted, and I paid that person out because I'd rather they have the money in a way that, the, I was going to the hearing anyways, and they were out uh, or non-payment of rent for about 3,000 or 2,000 or something like that. And I said, you know what? It's gonna probably take me about a couple months to get you out anyway, so I'll do cash for keys. And I said that, I'm out because I, they said that you need to stay until the sheriff comes. You know, I said, here's the two months. Why don't you leave now? Because either I lose the two months or I give it to you. That's the mm -hmm. only time I've ever done that. And I said it again. I'm not, my whole model is never to like push people out. It's, we are following the forms from the government and that's all it is, the N4s, uh, the L1s. And then if need be, it's like, I may do cash for keys if that person is willing to leave on their own, just, you know, and she actually cleaned up and said, I'm sorry, because she actually, her, her spouse lost her job, lost his job. And I actually knew the, um, the, uh, uh, the owner of the slow, snowplow company because he actually snowplowed my other buildings and he was actually a counselor at Waterloo. So it's a small world here. So I hired somebody. He kind of stiffed me. He lost his job. I knew the former landscaper, and then I met him back as a counselor in Waterloo. So it's like, you know, it, you always work with people. I'm, I'm trying to work with people. Some people take me, you know, as being very harsh or whatever. I don't, like, I, I do apologize for people, like, if they take me very harsh, I don't mean to. I have that effect on women, I don't know why. But when it comes down to it, it's like, we do have, so tenants here understand that we are, just going through the proper procedure. These are the landlord tenant board, it was just uh, provincial guidelines that we have to follow their guidelines. I can't write a sticky note and saying that you owe me three cents or 10 cents or whatever, right? It doesn't, it's not gonna fly that way. I have to write on the proper procedure. But now again, the, the procedure is this is that. We're gonna um, follow up with a phone call, say, hey, you are a little bit short. Do you mind paying this in the next, uh, the next month? Or if you want, if you pay us now, then it just becomes null and void, mm -hmm. okay? I'm sure everybody does this, and it really is computer generated. I'm, People ask me this all the time. He goes, is it really computer generated, Casey? Right, and I go, yes it is, because we actually use Yardi. I've mentioned that before. Mm -hmm. um, in one of my first videos, I go, we actually use Yardi, okay? And a lot of the property management companies use that. It pulls the balance that's owing on Yardi and it just drops it into the, the forms. And then we just print it off. And I actually didn't see the forms, um, the notices, and then my minister just either mails it out or hands it out or drops it in the mailbox. And I, when I drop it, when I drop it, I don't see the amount sometimes. I actually, because I'm in and out, I'm like, I have to be efficient. So I'm like, bang, bang, bang. 
drop it in the mailbox, and I leave. I actually didn't go through each one. I, it, it's difficult. If you have 80,000, I wish I had 80,000 units, but you can't sit there and say 80,000, like, is it okay, is it okay? We, have, we only have 250, but 250, I need to get that done at that specific time because the dates are on that form. And then when, when I'm here, I actually drop it in, their, their mailbox. The reason being, again, even when we give it to them, I had tenants say that I didn't receive it. Mm -hmm. Right, so they have to sign an affidavit. I go to it's a certificate of service, and you go to the tribunal saying that I did provide that. And some people will still say that I didn't receive it, I didn't get the L1s, or uh, L1s is actually now mailed out from the uh, from the tribunal. But the N4, you do it. Uh, you either mail it out. You have to give. We do usually give five days extra because if you're mailing it out. We don't usually do that. Now I just drop it in because it has so many incidents. Honestly, like, yeah, tenants didn't receive it or whatever. Let, let's benefit Adelf to them. But I actually did drop it in the mailbox. They say they didn't receive it. Mm -hmm. So when I'm to the T, I look at the time. I have five buildings that have to drop and fours out on one day. I'm there in and out, yeah. right? So property managers, like, I still like, I love doing this. I like to be, you know, getting my hands dirty. But I'm to the T. I have to make sure I manage my time properly because I have to go pick up the kids, right? Um, but yeah, when it comes down to knowing your forms, knowing all of this, the N fours, the three cents or things like that, I think it is blown over, but it's great dialogue, great discussion. It opens up um, uh, this whole tenant landlord issue that we have to work together yeah. to reach that common goal because we're in the business. Um, I, I said this before is that I'm not investing off, I'm not, I could have been working in an ivory tower, downtown Bay Street, mm. uh, sitting in a nice little cubicle, <laughs> in a nice little cubicle, and then answering phone calls or whatever, and um, uh, maximizing my foreign content, investing in the uh, FTSE 100, Hang Sang, right? You, you know what, the Nikai, like, I could easily be doing that, right? But now I'm actually investing. All landlords here are investing back in their community, okay? Mm -hmm. So let's not give the landlords a bad rap. The, they're actually putting money back into the community, putting money back into this, the building itself, and increasing the, the, the livability of buildings, right? So I'm trying my hardest, okay, to, to be a good quote unquote landlord, okay? It's yeah. bad, like, but we're putting money back into our country, back into our cities, okay? And I'm not investing. I can easily maximize my foreign content in my RSPs. I can easily invest in the S&P 500, the Dow, things like that. Um, because those are bigger markets, maybe better returns, but I'm actually investing here, back into our country. You're investing in London. Mm -hmm. I'm investing in St. Catharines, Kitchener-Waterloo, Cambridge. All these places that we put money back into these communities, into these older buildings and bring, bring them up. We do have to make money because a lot of these buildings don't make money at the get-go. Two years, I expect nothing in return. Even for my investors, I tell them there's no return, right? I don't give them return for two, for two years. Yes, it does make money because over time, there is that turnover and there is that potential rent, in, like potential rent, that rent goes up. I've talked about that, but at the get-go, it doesn't make any money. I don't promise anything to anybody saying that, oh, we're gonna make a ton loads of money. Yes, in the future, it does. This business does make money. But I'd rather do this still, buy in a place, invest in our community, that open up at McDonald's, okay? I was gonna open up at McDonald's. Everybody's happy with a Happy Meal, okay? Trust me. Everybody wants like those high returns. Opening McDonald's is easier, okay? S selling Happy Meals, every kid is happy, right? But I'm doing this and I still get, you know, the bad rap for it. But look at this as something to learn. Like Manny Brennan, we learn from this. This is something that we're going to take from this and increase our knowledge and do things properly because open discussion is great. Thanks again to Casey Wong. And honestly, you guys need to thank Casey as well. So jump in that comment section. I know he doesn't comment, but trust me, he does read a lot of the comments that get posted on these videos. So I would really appreciate it. And I know Casey would enjoy it as well. If you just kind of gave him your feedback, show him your support, all that great stuff, because Casey's given us so much amazing information over the years now. Yeah, he's been on my YouTube channel for years at this point. So again, thank you, Casey, so much. If you guys want more Casey Wong, and I know most of you do, check out this playlist right here with Casey. Or if you want more different Casey Wong, check out this playlist with Casey. All right, thanks again, guys. And remember, making money is a team sport. There's more than enough money in this world for us to all make it, but if you're not saving it, I mean, like, what's the point?